Greetings everybody, welcome back to the Awesome Lindsay channel. So I have this Kodak Vest Pocket Camera, which is around 100 years old. And about uh, seven or eight years ago, I did a YouTube video about shooting 35 millimeter film in this, which is not the film that it takes. It's just what I had at the time. And so I put it in and started shooting. And back then I really didn't know a lot about film, but today I still don't. So I'm gonna call up my friend Ryan from the Rye Gordon channel. He shoots a lot of film, and I'm gonna see if he can share some of his film expertise with me and try and shoot this again. Hey dude, so I have this 100-year-old camera, and I tried shooting with film in it a few years ago, but it didn't really turn out super well. And since you know a lot about film, I was wondering if you could help me rig up some film for this and shoot it. Sure dude, come on out. Cool, I'll be right there. Hey dude, so thanks for helping me out with this. Heck yeah, this is super cool. Yeah. So we are back in the same spot I was eight years ago. Most everything is the same. That whole thing is out there is all the same. There's new cars. So we have three rolls of film here and this camera takes 127 film. The roll on the right is 120. The roll in the middle is 127 store-bought and the roll on the left is 127 that Ryan cut down from a 120 roll of film. So the, the, the reason I suggested um, 160 film for film your iso is set at whatever your film speed is for those who don't shoot film 160 is your iso so like if you have your digital camera you'd set it to iso 160 it's the same thing as putting in a 160 film since we're out here and it's super bright you're not going to be wanting a 400 speed film especially since your shutter speeds are so limited but that's when pushing and pulling film comes in if it's too bright and you can't quite make it you can always push the film and add in the development you add some time and that bumps up the the iso of the film the good thing with color negative film is it has a ton of latitude so a lot of the the old settings of like brilliance or cloudy that was possible because if you overexpose you can most likely retain the information even if we shoot three stops overexposed we'll be able to retain a, a decent image so we're gonna load this up because the one shot i want to get is this kind of view because that's what i got last time okay now we're gonna try this side it's got a cool little uh, little bit of mountains in there, some uh, old machinery in the background. So, how'd that feel? I feel like a Ryan Gordon. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll be as cool as him. Look at the camera sizes. I'll never be that cool. <laughs> I'm just compensating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, frame up a shot. Okay, on this aperture, there's some indicators of like what your environment should be like when you set it. So today feels brilliant. <laughs> so we are going to go, so how does that work? So my light meter says 160 ISO, you're gonna shoot shutter speed 125th at F22. So this first shot, we're gonna go as close to the light meter. We're gonna take a second shot and we're gonna go with what the camera says. So this viewfinder sucks. So we're basically just gonna point this toward the field and take a shot. Here we go. That's it. <laughs> That's still <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> okay, so frame one was the light meter settings. Frame two, we're gonna go with what the camera suggests. So since it's brilliant, um, and I wanna be it, let's do F16. Um, we're gonna go to the 25 setting, and we're gonna wind this. Here we go. <laughs> Bam! Hi. 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 So we have our lovely models. For this 100-year-old camera shoot, I thought it would be cool to have some so models. 
and like 1920s garb and things like that, because why not? So Lucas has a bunch of cameras because you guys have antiques business, right? Yes, indeed. Can you tell me more about that? Turn treasure vintage. It's mainly jewelry, but we pretty much do everything. So I just brought the cameras because I knew you guys could probably actually use them. So. the shot of these two lovers in the field and um, we have f63 on this shutter speed of 100 which I'm assuming is one one hundredth of a second and our film is one is ISO 160 okay one two three okay so we've got all the shots we came for in this original first location uh, we're gonna go up the road here a little bit because there's a tractor and like a, another piece of machinery we're gonna try and shoot at. with the tractor and we are moving on to our third location so we tried knocking on the door of this house no one's home but there is one super fluffy cat hey there I came here so many years ago, I took a shot of this little warehouse looking thingy, shed area, I don't know what it's called. And then I took a shot of this house. Uh, there wasn't any cars here. There was also just one old, really cool looking truck here. Um, but it's changed obviously in eight years. So I'm gonna take the two shots that I did and just kind of give you a comparison. best pocket reshoot one of the main shots I wanted was this location with the models standing in front of the house in their 1920s attire the location is quite a ways away from me so I just checked the street view on Google Maps and the most recent images on street view looked like I had remembered so I decided to chance it and hope those images were still accurate but sadly the location has changed quite a bit so we decided to shoot on the opposite side of the house which still provided a really cool photo location We have Lucas in a 1910s bathing suit. We're just gonna have him standing in the middle of his filt, and then we have uh, Ryan and me kind of doing the same shot, really. Okay. All right, 
Uh, how do I even outro this? That was fun. I hope it worked. So that finishes. Wait. Hopefully this is entertaining and informative. No. I so think that you might want to do an outro after you've seen them. Okay, everyone. So I decided to do a proper outro. First off, I really want to thank Ryan for all of his help. Uh, he actually developed and scanned all the images that I took. I would recommend checking out his video here that he's done. Uh, it shows off how he did it in kind of a cool artistic way. So check it out there. Also a link in the description. And I want to again thank Lulu and Lucas for coming out and modeling for this shoot. They were awesome to work with, great people. So if you guys do have any questions, leave them in the comments field. I'll do my best to answer them. And thanks everyone for watching.